So today's message is hearing God's voice. Hearing God's voice. So many people today ask me, they ask me, where's God's will for me? And, and so I, I wrote down this. I said, what does it actually mean when we say we want to know the will of God? Okay. Uh, it, it doesn't mean that we want to know His plans for our lives. It doesn't mean we want His guidance in specific decisions that we make. Do we really want His guidance? Or, or do we want to, do we want to, want, do we want to get the most and do the least? Most Christians got it, that's true. But do we desire His direction in just the hard stuff or the good stuff too? You know, do we really want His direction in our lives? So the, the question is, instead of asking, the question you should be asking instead of, how do I know God's will is, how can I know the voice of God? Because God speaks. God speaks. In fact, Jesus. Jesus said this, Jesus said, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now look closely at that word proceeds. It's not proceeded. It's in the present tense. That means God still speaks. God still speaks. Okay. And, and that's that what man doesn't live by. Bro. So what are we supposed to live by? We're supposed to, Now, it's important that you eat. You know, I mean, we, we all need to eat. We all need to take care of ourselves. You know, there's certain things that are important to do. You know, you need to eat right. You need to exercise. Take, I take lots of vitamins. You know, but it's more important to know what the words are that proceed from, that, that proceed from God's mouth. And, and so, 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 proceed speaks of a continuing function. It's in the present tense, which means he's speaking now, and ten minutes from now, he's going to still be speaking. An hour from now, he'll still be speaking. It means something that not only happened in the past, it's happening in the present, it's going to continue in the future. Okay? He has something to say, but most of us are too busy to listen. Okay? That's why it's important to learn. There was an article by an unknown author that. It, it, it helps me get something out of any sermon. Because sometimes I, sometimes when I listen to certain people, especially on the radio or the TV, and I don't want to say that, but but the writer said that at least one time in every sermon, no matter who the, the preacher is, God breaks through the words of the preacher and speaks directly to the people. Yeah. It may be a single sentence or just one phrase, but we can all well afford to listen to the entire discourse with care. Unless we miss that one illuminated certain sentence which God speaks to us. A sentence that brings us conviction, penitence, hope, strength, or renewed faith. So many of us miss that one special word from God because we're comparing the preacher's manner with that of some other preacher. Or we, we just listen intently. You know, or we don't like the person. He said, but now, if we would just listen intently for that one portion that God intends, intends for us to be applied specifically to my own heart. To my own heart. Okay? So basically, there's two words that are translated in the Greek as the word in the Bible. The Greek words are logos and rhema. They're both translated as the word of God. So it's, under, it's important to understand the difference. It's also important to know when and what he's speaking. Okay, so the word logos refers to an, an expression, an articulation of thought. It's logos is where we get the word logic in our language. It's the reasoning, it's the logic. Okay, the Greeks back then, especially amongst the philosophers, were looking for that logic that would transcend the material world. That's why John wrote this about Logos. He said that logic you're looking for is Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, the Logos, and that Logos was with God, and that Logos was God. That logic is God. Okay? It's more than a, it's more than a mere name of, of an object, but it's the embodiment of a concept, idea, or thought. Okay? Jesus was the greatest expression of God in the body. He was God. He was God the Son in the form of a human being. 
He was God in the form of a human. Okay? The word rhema refers to the personal living or life-giving word of God. Okay? It, it's that it's you, you can only get it, you can only get it when you spend time with it. You can only get it if you expect it. Like I tell you guys all the time, if you come to church expecting nothing, guess what you get? You gotta come expecting. Okay? The, the Bible says this in Jonah 1 1. He said the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord, the Logos, it's in the Greek of in, in, in the Septuagint. It's that Rhema, that, that Rhema, that word of God came to Jonah, the son of Elantai, saying. It was a personal word. It was just for Jonah. But Jonah did the wrong thing with it. Okay, what did Jonah do? He had wrong thinking. So he ran. Put a lot of people in jeopardy because of that. Okay? In, in, in the Gospel of John, he says, He that rejects me and receiveth not my words, my the word is Rhema. He said, Hath one that judges him, the, the word of the Logos that I have spoken. And the same shall judge him in the last day. See, there's two different words for the word of God in, in one in one scripture. Okay? In Acts chapter 10, verse 44, Peter yet spake these words, this rhema, and the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the Logos, the word. So I really got blew me when I started studying this stuff. So the Jews heard the audible voice. Okay? They, they, the, the Holy Spirit was speaking through. Peter had received something from God that he told them that they needed to hear. And God gave it to them too. Amen. So, for my own for my own sake, I, I wrote this. That there's many voices in the world. There's the voice of the TV, the voice of the radio, there's the voice of your friends, there's the voice of the people that you don't want to hear anymore. Kind of wish they shut up. Come on now, I'm on it. I don't know what happens with that people. The Bible reveals that there's many kind of voices in the world that are clamoring for your attention. Okay? There's so many kinds of voices, but, but none of them was, is without significance. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul said, you know, you, 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 and unless, unless the musician plays the notes that you recognize, how will you recognize the music? It's the same way with words. When you just talk, 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 and you wear people out, they don't want to hear you. But when you're speaking something that's important, people usually listen. So what are the voices in the world? What are these many voices? Number one is the voice of man. It, the, the voice of man is easy to recognize. It's the audible voice of another human being. In Acts chapter 5 verse 29 it says, Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Sometimes the voice of man may give wise advice, but any time the voice of man conflicts with the voice of God, we should obey God. Let me speak to my next voice. The voice of Satan. Uh-oh. The voice of Satan goes all the way back to the beginning of the book. Genesis chapter 3. Satan's voice, Jesus said that Satan was the father of lies. Well, the first time he speaks, he says, oh, the day that you eat that, did God say that? Did God really say that? He tries to make, try, he makes them doubt what God really said. And that's how, boy, he, he always, his voice lies and deceives and it always attempts to lead people away into sin, away from God. Okay? You can easily recognize this when you, when you read of the temptations of Jesus by Satan in Matthew chapter 4. He fasted for 40 days and he said, oh, if, if you're really the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. And that's what Jesus said. And that's what my brother God. But by every word that listens from the mouth of God. You can read in conversations between Satan and God in Job. In Job chapter 1 and chapter 2. Okay? Evil spirits and demons also have voices. It says... For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. I don't know about you, we see a lot of them in San Bernardino. Especially if you guys hang around the church a lot, man. You see them coming here all day long. Some of them are tweaking on it. 
Amen. Listen, in Luke chapter 4, it said, In the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone, what have we had to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And demons always recognize Jesus. They'll recognize the Jesus in you. I get to see it all the time. I come out of the office and I'll start, and I'll start praying. And I'll say, be healed. Yeah, either be healed in Jesus' name or get out of here in Jesus' name. They'll, they, they always run out the door and down the street. I mean, fast. They're gone. I wanted to say be healed in Jesus' name first. Because I want, I want to be able to see one of the demons. I, I want to see them in their right mind. You know what I mean? You know, because a lot of us were kind of like that when we were in the world. You know? Listen, that, that, that next, next we hear the voice of self. And I don't know you, but I hear this voice a lot. You know what I mean? The voice of self is, is, is when we get in ourselves, especially when you go through problems and you're going through trials, and you hear that voice in the back of your head, it sounds like your own voice talking to you. You know what I mean? So I guess some of you recognize, you know, or when somebody else starts talking and you're like telling them, shut up, you're not saying nothing, but you're sure thinking, you, you know, you know. But, but this is a, in Luke 16 and Luke 18 and in Jonah chapter 4, this is where Jonah, Jonah said, God, I always have to just die. You know, that's, the Bible warns us concerning this voice in Jeremiah. Chapter 10, verse 23, he says, I know that the way of man is not of himself. It is not man that walketh to direct his steps. So we've got to quit listening to ourselves. We've got to quit listening to that voice. So, so how, but how do I do that? How do I hear the voice of God? Well, Jesus said that believers can know the voice of God and distinguish it from strange voices who give the wrong advice. And that's in John chapter 10. He, he said, the sheep hear his voice. The sheep hear my voice. They hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name. And he leads them out. When he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. And I don't know, when I, when I, when I read this many years ago, I, 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 you know, when I read some words of Jesus that really convict me, you know, I, I had to ask myself, do I really know Jesus' voice? Do I really know him? And I pray that you go home and you ask yourself that question when you get home. But as Jesus said, that brought us the path that leads to destruction. And many go that way, but never, never was the gate and straight as the path that leads to life. And only a few find it. And I ask myself, do, do I really know that straight you know path? Do I really know the voice of Jesus? See, and, and the funny thing about believers, they're compared, we're compared right here with sheep. <laughs> and I want you to know that's really not a compliment. The sheep really, it's characteristic of sheep not to know where they're going. They always get lost. They need someone to lead them. Okay? Jesus said he was, the, he was the good shepherd. He was the leader. He was the one that leads the sheep. He said his sheep would know his voice and they would follow him. They would they, instead of strange voices. What are those strange voices? Well, we look at them. The voice of my, my own. If I'm a sheep, without Jesus, I'm lost. If I listen to, if I watch too much TV, without reading enough Bible, you know, then I, I start to hear stuff that I shouldn't be hearing. I start listening to stuff I shouldn't be listening to. I, I'm the only one like that. You know what I mean? Okay. The psalmist said this. He said, I will hear what God the Lord will speak. Maybe that's what made David a man after God's own heart. Maybe that's what made David a little more respect. Maybe not any different because God's not a respecter of persons. But that's why, the, maybe that's why the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart because he said, I will hear what God the Lord will speak. He doesn't say, I might hear. He says, I will hear. That means he set his mind to know it. 
Je Jesus said this. He said, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, who is now, that's the Holy Spirit. And in the Romans, he's called the Spirit of Christ. Okay? It says that he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. That, man, I don't know about you, but I love to know, I love to know what's coming down the road. <laughs> I did a bit of stuff. Little prudence, little foresight to be able to see what God sees. You know. But if you guys don't see what's coming down the road in America, then you guys ain't looking. They elected a president who lies. I can hear that voice say liar, liar, that's a liar. Listen, the man was having difficulty communicating with his wife and concluded that she was becoming hard hearing. So he decided to conduct a test without her knowing about it. So one evening, he, he sat in a chair on the far side of the room and her back was to him. And she couldn't see him very quietly. He whispered, Can you hear me? And there was no response. So he moved a little closer and he asked her again, Can you hear me now? Still no reply. Quietly, he edged closer. And he whispered the same words with no answer. And finally, he moved right behind her chair and said, Can you hear me now? To his surprise and chagrin, she responded with an irritated voice, For the fourth time, yes. <laughs> See, the hearing problem usually isn't with God. It's usually with us. Because I'm not only hard of hearing, I have selective hearing. Okay. What does that mean? It means I only hear what I want to. And I know I'm the only one like that, right? So, so let's consider three important aspects of hearing God's word. That we'll, we'll call them the prerequisites. If you went to college, you know what a prerequisite is. It's something that needs to be done before. Okay. So a prerequisite. There's some different things that we need to, 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 to discern between the voice of God and, and to learn about those who understood the voice of God and those who didn't. Okay. They didn't understand. They didn't perceive. They didn't comprehend it. In, this, in John chapter 10. What was required for the best conditions to really hear the God? What makes God's voice relevant? Remember, a stranger doesn't get it. Okay, so the first thing that needs to be done is you need to get saved. <laughs> if you have a hard time hearing it, remember, salvation is, is a process that begins when you choose it. It's not fully completed until you die. People say, oh, I got saved. No. Okay, you, okay, you started the process. We started the process. Okay, that first, that, that's when you receive Christ and, you're, and you ask for your, you admit that you're a sinner and, and you're forgiven of your sins. And that's when the, that, that means that you're, you're saved from the penalty of sin. But wait a minute, the power of sin still reigns. There's a lot, I know a lot, of, there's a sin, we live in a sinful, sick world. It's sin sick. Okay? And, and but little by little, as I learn to hear God's voice, as I, as I walk with God, little by little, I overcome the power of sin. It's called, that's what sanctification is. The process of sanctification is where God sets me free, little by little, from the power of sin. First it was a big, see, I drugs and alcohol and all that stuff, and then it was my mouth, you know, I didn't cuss as much anymore. You know, and now I now I think that then he started working on this stuff, thing right here, you know. And, and now I think I, I don't I don't even think like I used to. It was amazing because I was working on my fence the other day and I, I hit my thumb with a hammer and I went, ouch. And I thought, hey, that's pretty cool. I didn't, you know. Because yeah. usually it's, you know, a cuss word. But that that was something that God did, you know, in, in my heart and in my head. Because I, I went, ouch, you know. So so salvation. He said, you believe because you're not unwashed. In John chapter 8, he says that he that hears, he that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because you are not of God. Wow, that's pretty hard saying there. That, that Pilate in John chapter 18, he said, Pilate therefore said unto him, Are thou a king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end I was born, for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth, and everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Wow. So first we need to get saved. The second is you need to be receptive. 
What does that mean? <laughs> says, early, early, I say unto you, the sheep fall on where they know his voice. You got you got to want to hear. You got you got to expect something. That's like when you come in. When I when I go to church, when I listen to K. William, I always expect God to talk to me. If somebody get that, that person, if they're if they're get digging into the Word of God, and they're going to tell God is going to use them to speak to me. I remember I got this at the ranch when I was with Willie. I I always came in from the ranch expecting God that to use my pastor to speak to me right to my heart. Okay. In Revelation, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. I will sup with him and he with me. Wow. In John chapter 8, verse 43, he says, Why do you not understand my speech? The word speech is the Greek word Leon, and he said, How come you don't actually understand the words I'm speaking? Because you cannot hear. You cannot receive and comprehend with the intent to obey. See, a Jewish person, when they said, like when they say, hear, O Israel, faith comes by hearing. That means when you hear what God says, you're going to do what He says. And that's why He says here, why do you not understand my speech? Because you can't even hear my word. And he says, when you, when you hear my word, you're not going to do nothing with it. They're just words if we don't do anything with them. But if you do something with them, they're living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword. It divides soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and it's a discerner of God's intent for the body. That's Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Wow. It comes to life. Spiros Zodahedi says that they were listening to what he had to say, but they were not capable of understanding because they did not want to understand. Those who will not give room in their hearts to His truth will not understand His speech, utterance, and the outward form of His language, which His word assumes. Okay? Matthew chapter 17, verse 5 says that while He yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed Him. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye Him. In other words, listen to what he has to say and be ready to do it. Amen. Hebrews chapter 3. This is verse 7 and verse 15. It says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost says, Today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. So in other words, if you don't do what you hear God speak, you're provoking God to do something you really don't want to do. Because God is a just God. See, justice comes from love. God is a love. God is a holy, holy, holy God. But, and He does love us. And He is merciful and kind in all His things. But He is a just God. And if we're not willing to listen and obey, He's going to do what He's got to do. Because His justice demands it. Amen? That's why Thomas Jefferson said, I, I, I tremble when I think that my God is just and that His justice cannot sleep forever. I hope it Listen, another, another prerequisite is faith. Faith. My sheep hear, my, the, the sheep hear His voice. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. And they follow me. Well, where are we going? We're not headed to a material place. We're headed to heaven. We're headed, we're headed to eternity. Those who believe have eternal life. See, that what we see here is temporary. <coughs> we have to understand that what we hear, when you're following Jesus, the, the first thing He said, if you back way up into the beginning of the Gospel, He says, He said, He said, follow me and I'll make you fish, fish for people. So if you're not fishing for men, who are you following? If you're not telling other people about Jesus, if you're not fishing for men, who are you following? You're not following Jesus because that's the first thing He told us. You're going to follow Him through the midst of trials. You're going to follow Him through suffering. You're going to follow Him through shame. You're going to follow Him through... There's some really good stuff that goes on, but there's some really hard stuff too. But He leads you through it. Remember, He understands. He never did nothing wrong. He never said nothing wrong. He only did what was right and He killed Him. 
That's why Paul said that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, that if by any means I may attain to the resurrection of the dead. Okay? Hebrews says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as to them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. See, faith is an action word, it's a verb. Faith is a verb. It's what we do. It's how we live. Amen? And then Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the rhema of God, the word of God, the rhema. Remember, that's that personal, that's that personal, it's not just the logical reasoning, it, it's that, but when God speaks to me, man, I want to I wanna do what God says, because I know the benefit from it. I know the benefit from it. Amen? And the next thing is having a, being attentive. What does it mean to be attentive? It means to pay attention. In Exodus chapter 3, it says, when the, Lord, the, when the Lord saw that he, Moses, had turned aside to see God, called him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And, and Moses said, here am I. Here I am. When God calls your name, are you going to say, Remember, it took Samuel three times to get it. When you're young in the Lord, and you can be you can be 50, 60 years old and still be young in the Lord. Amen. Come on now. But but listen, when God sometimes God has to say your name a couple of times. And if you keep hearing that, then then then, then just bow your heart before the Lord and say, Here I am, Lord. Amen. And that so so attentive means you gotta be paying attention. And the next part is discerning. Attentive. Discerning. This is 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 11 and 13. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. But after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mouth. He went out and stood at the entering of the cave, and there came a voice unto him, saying, What doest thou here, Elijah? Sometimes we think it's in the craziness of life and the situations. Sometimes God has to stir us up so we'll pay attention. Amen? He does it to me. You know. He did that beginning with, he'll make me sick. So I lay in bed going, oh, I'm so good, you know. But then I'll finally go, okay, Lord, you're trying to tell me something? Okay, I'm, I'm listening. Because I know none of you are like me, right? Okay, so after learning the prerequisites, what, what's the purpose in hearing God's voice? Why does God want us to really hear His voice? And it's in the scripture. He says He calleth His own sheep by name. He loves you. He knows your name. He knew your name before you were born. He knew your name before your parents were born. He knew your name before your grandparents were born. He knew your name before your great-grandparents were born. He knew your name before He made the world. He knew you. And He wants you, He wants to spend time with you. Because He loves you. That's why He made Adam. That's why He scooped up a scoop of dirt. And he wanted to, he, he had communion with Adam. Adam got a kick. Adam walked with God and got, Adam got to name all the animals. Read your Bible. It's like Adam goes me away. And there was only one thing that he could, didn't have to do. One thing. Go, hey, see that tree over there? Don't you eat from that tree? Now how many are there? How many trees can we not eat from? Well he knew he knew eventually they're gonna be trying to smoke the tree too. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Exodus chapter 33, verse 11 says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses face to face as a man speaks unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, and then departed, not out of death. He spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. That's cool, man. That's cool. 
But you gotta remember that it says that Moses was the most humble man that ever lived. If you haven't got that, you're not reading your Bible. So that means we gotta put our pride down. Amen. And we're taught to be prideful. I was taught to be prideful. Amen. So so another purpose is comprehension. What is comprehension? It, it, it is is it, it, it's the state of understanding. Comprehension is, is not knowing what the words mean. Knowing and understanding what and, and John says to hear his to hear his voice. Why? The word hear means to perceive, to understand. It is to perceive a, the sense of what is said. Okay? Number one, to under, to perceive, to understand is to, per, to to know his presence. That's what God wants you. That's why I put that number one. His presence. This is John chapter 10. He says he goes before them. You know, Jesus goes with you over here. He said he would never leave you or forsake you. I love it. There's a, there's a, there's a picture that they put on the internet. It's, it, it's a guy doing a dose of dope and Jesus is behind him with his arm out. Do you really? He loves us. Number two is his holiness. He said, I am the good shepherd. Number three is his love. He said the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And he did. Number four is his will. He said, his will, I want to know God's will. Well, see, that God's will, it's a little farther down on the list because after you, if you, you got to know his presence, you got to know his holiness, you got to know his love, and then you know his will. He leads them out. He said, I am the Lord of the sheep. And then you, you understand, when you understand those things, number five is his sovereignty. What does that mean? He said, I have the power to lay down my life and I have the power to take it up again. He's God. Jesus is God. He's God the Son. If, if we call him the, the, the second part of the Godhead, the Trinity, people get tripped out when I talk about stuff like that. It's not in the Bible. No, but God is revealed in three persons in Scripture. There's only one God. There's only one God. Revealed in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We don't understand it. You're not supposed to. Don't try to understand it. Just believe it by faith. Okay? And that brings me to number six. It says, His faithfulness. No, no man no man is able to pluck them out of my heart. Jesus said, if you're in, if you're in Jesus' hand, no, you, can't, you can't be plucked out of His hand. And He said, the Father's hand is even greater than His. And all this stuff should bring you to, and this is that old word we all hate, obedience. The sheep follow Him. The sheep follow Him. Okay? James, James was Jesus' half-brother. His name, they called him James the Less. He was the pastor of the Jerusalem church. They used to call him Camel Meats. He, he knelt down and prayed on the, on the stone so much that he had big old giant cows in front of him. They said he had, looked like he had Camel Meats. Because he'd kneel down right on the rocks. And, and, and he said, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. When you don't do it, if you read God's word and don't do what it says, if you hear the sermon and you're touched by it, and you do not, don't do nothing with it, the devil will even have the message. Because you're deceiving yourself. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Can't get any clearer than that. Jesus says in Matthew 28, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Huh? Jesus commanded them. Yeah, Jesus did. The Ten Commandments are commands from Jesus. If you didn't know that, then you better read your Bible. All the commands of God, if Jesus is God, and God wrote the Ten Commandments, then... There's also nine commands in Scripture in the Gospels. I preached that sermon a bunch of times. You guys should know it by now. Some of you, anyway. Okay? It's teaching them to observe all the things whatsoever I've commanded you to go on with you always, even to the end of the world. And then Jesus says this, and this is the one that always gets me why you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things I say. Luke 11, 28 says, Yea, rather, blessed are them that hear the word of God and keep it. Okay. John 13, 17 says, if you know these things, happy are you if you do them. 
Romans 2.13 says, For not hearers of the law are just, justified before God, but doers of the law shall be justified. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3, it says, Hereby we know that we do know Him if we keep His commandments. Okay? So that so we've looked at the purpose of hearing His voice, and now we're going to look at the provision. I'm going to start moving faster here. Okay, in the Old Testament, God spoke many times in various ways. Okay? First, He used angels. Genesis 16. In Genesis 15, he used visions. In, in, in Genesis 28, he, the, Jacob dreamed dreams. In Exodus, when they made the tabernacle, he used the, the priest's garments called the Urim and the Thummim. Those were the breast, those were the rough stones that were on. They would inquire of God, and that's what that's what the Urim and Thummim were. Okay? It, it, in Jeremiah 18, it was symbolic actions. In, 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 we read in uh, 1 Kings 19, it was a still small voice. Some of your translations say a gentle whisper. Okay? In Exodus chapter 8, it was miraculous signs and wonders. Okay? In Exodus chapter 3, it was a burning bush. Okay? In, in Numbers chapter 9, it was a cloud or a, pill, or a pillar of fire. If you read Numbers chapter 22, he even spoke to a guy with a donkey. He did. So now today present, how, how does Jesus speak? How does the Lord speak? Well, He speaks, Jesus said that He speaks by His Holy Spirit. He speaks by His Holy Spirit. Since henceforth I, I, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known to you. The second way He speaks, is with the Word of God, the Bible. Okay? It says all Scripture, all Scripture, what does that mean? The whole Bible is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. What is doctrine? It's teaching on how we should live. What is reproof? Reproof is something we already know that we need to be taught again. For correction. What's correction? Well, that's pretty self-explanatory. And for instruction in righteousness. Inspiration. It was given by inspiration of God. In essence, the Bible is theos. Theos is God. Neo means to breathe or to blow. All scripture is God breathed. How do I know? Second Peter says we also have a more sure word of prophecy wherein to ye all do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. In fact, it doesn't. it's not what you think it means. It's not what I think it means. It's what God means. Okay? For the prophecy came not of old time and by the will of God, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. Okay? There's a story about President Roosevelt... Franklin D. Roosevelt. Okay, apparently he got tired of smiling, smiling at, just at presidential gatherings. You know, so he, he was was expected to respond with presidential sayings and be nice and all that. So one day, one evening, he decided to find out whether anybody was really even listening to what he was saying. So as each person came up to him, he extended his hands and flashed that big smile, and he said, "I murdered my grandmother this morning." People would automatically respond with comments like, oh, how lovely. Or they, they would just continue your great work. So he did that. Nobody listened to what he was actually saying except one foreign diplomat. He, he went up to the president. He extended his hand and gave him a big smile, shook his hand, and he said, I murdered my grandmother this morning. And the diplo diplomat smiled back and said, I'm, I'm sure she had it coming. <laughs> See, it's so funny that but see, most people, we don't even listen. We go through the motions. I can do that sometimes. I can do that sometimes as a pastor. But I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to just go through the motions. I want to know God. I want to get close to God. But Paul said, he said, All the, if you want to lead a godly life in Christ, you're going to suffer persecution. You're going to go through some really bad stuff, but you've got to keep your eyes on the prize 
And the key for me is to not think and to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> it's the truth. And I know I'm not the only one here. Amen? That's my, that's, so that's why it's so important to encourage each other while that is called today. Because some of us are going to go through it. Our sister Anika is going through it. She misses her old man. And that's right in the desert. But you know, he's not hurting, but he's up there cheering us on in heaven with Pastor Poncho and with Harold and Miss Viola and all the ones there. They're up there cheering us on, but we miss him. We miss him. Poncho was my best friend. I miss him. He was the only one that would look me straight in the eye and tell me, sucker, you're wrong. I miss him. But what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? What am I going to do? So that brings me, do we know his voice? Do we know his voice? See, this is a question that I, a lot of times I do. I've been wrapped up so much, you know, with Pastor Jeff going to Fresno, you know, and all this stuff. I'm like, Ooh. he does a lot of work around here. Who's going to step up and take his place? One of you? I know, I got a couple of guys stepping up. They're going to try to fill his shoes. But wait a minute, you're all, you're all of you are called. All, every one of you are called. Every one of you are called by God. But Jesus said many are called, but few are chosen. I think the choice is ours. I know that I'm living proof that none of you have an excuse. I'm not special. I'm not good. I'm just great. I'm evil. I'm nobody from nowhere. I just stepped up. And I'm blown away how God uses me. He said, if you got a big mouth, then use it for the Lord. If you got a big heart, use it for the Lord. If you got a big brain, and I wish I had a big brain, then use it for the Lord. If you got a strong back, use it for the Lord. You got all, every one of you has a gift. Some of you have a lot of gifts. Some of you have a lot of gifts. You have you can work on cars, you can work on electronics, you can paint. Some of you can paint, you can do drywall, some of you can do roofing. What are you are you using? What are you doing for the Lord with the gifts that he's given? Some of you can work on cars. Or maybe we need to build a few more bikes. Amen. Amen. And I don't care, I don't care if they're Hondas or Yamaha's or Kawasaki, I don't care. I'm not gonna get all stuck on it. Idol worship. <laughs> yeah, I know. So today let's bow our hearts before the Lord. And I hope today you've been equipped with some information that you'll take home. If, if any of you that want a copy of this sermon, I will give it to you. If you don't have any money, I will give it to you free. If you have a couple of bucks, paper and toner is not cheap. Okay? But if you have money, if you don't have money, I don't care. I want you to go home with this. Okay? If you have a couple of bucks, great. If you don't have money, that's fine. But I want you to go home and be equipped. Take this home and study it. Amen. Take this home and pray about it. Take this home and know, get into God's Word. Don't, before, when you go home, don't turn on your TV right away. Go home and pray. And study. Read John chapter 10. The Gospel of John chapter 10. Jesus teaches us about following Him, about hearing His voice, about knowing who He is. He reassures us that He knows His sheep by name. He knows us. Now He wants us to get to know Him. And it all starts when we ask, just like salvation starts when you ask. First you admit some things and you ask Jesus to come into your life, into your heart. And this is the same way if you are saved and you have asked Jesus into your heart, it's time for you to ask God to teach you how to hear His voice. And here's a lot of those scriptures that can help you on your path. So, if you've never asked Jesus into your heart, remember it all starts when you get saved. It all starts when you give and you surrender your life 
into Jesus' hands and ask Him to come live in you. And if you'd like to do that today, then stand up right where you're at. Some of you have said the sinner's prayer many times, but you're still not sure that you're going to go to heaven. And if that's you, just stand up right where you're at. And, and, and after we pray, come up. I have some pamphlets that will really help you. There are seven principles that you practice. They're really, they're so simple, but you have to practice them every day, every week. And when you do that, you're going you're gonna to start to get an assurance of your salvation. I don't talk about once saved, always saved, because that's not in the Bible. But there is a song called Blessed Assurance. And God gives you that. God lets you know that you have that, what you have what He's given you. It changes your life. It changes how you think. It changes how you act. It changes how you live. So today, if you really want this, or maybe, maybe you just want more Jesus, stand up right here. <laughs> Notice I'm on my feet already. So we're going to say a prayer. It's not really the words we say. It's two we really mean right here. Not here, but here. So we're going to say this prayer if you really mean this. Then repeat after me. Say, Father, thank you for this message. I want to know your voice. And I need your help. So please, Jesus, come into my heart in a brand new way. To help me to learn from about you. Help me to know who you are and how much you love me. Help me to, to know that you speak with the word. And I speak the word to me. Make it personal. And help me to live it out. And to build my life on the foundation of your word. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. And change me. Change the way I think. Change the way I act. And change my direction. So I can go your way. From this day forward. I want all that you have for me. So I give you my life. And all that I am. From this day forward, be my Savior and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.